Hi guys, I'm Heidi Hisrick and today I'm going to talk to you about the Origami Organelles Nervous System Model. And my students, we are going to be building this to learn about the central and peripheral nervous system and the three main kinds of neurons. Before you start watching this video, if it's possible, print the handout from underneath the video description. It's pretty simple. It's just a place to put your work. So you could also just get a sheet of white printer paper and that would work just fine. This is a little preview of what we're going to be making today. If you decide you want to do this activity, it's available for purchase online from origamiorganelles.com. It's $5.99 um, to buy it, and it has instructions as well as templates to print out. I did the color printed versions, but there's also a black and white template that you can print and uh, color in, and that works really well too. It just adds a little time requirement to working with this. So if you're a teacher and you're using this, I would estimate one class period on a normal schedule to do this piece of it and one class period to do this piece of it. If you're on block, you could do them both in one period um, based on my time estimates. I'll see how it goes with my actual students. The first thing for any origami organelles activity is to cut. So after you've printed out the two pages of the template, you just want to start cutting. And for my students, we are going to do the nervous system part, which you see on the screen right now one day, and then we will do the neurons on a separate day. So just cut out the nervous system for now. Here is my nervous system. I already practiced, so I already taped it, but I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. So you can see that for the rectangles, I did cut on the black lines, but when it came to the arms and the torso, I left myself a little leeway just so there would be, just so it'd be easier to work with than if I made it super, super thin. Once you have it cut out, you can give it a little bit of dimensionality so it's kind of designed like a paper doll. There's the brain. We kind of make that pop. Okay, and there are my two hands with the skin cells present. And here are my two legs with some muscles present. And then I'm gonna lay it at an angle just so there's room to draw and write. And I'm gonna tape it down in a couple of spots. Okay, so now I'm ready to start marking up my handout with some notes about this. And the first thing that I want us to do is look at the difference between the two divisions of the nervous system. So we have the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. I'm gonna divide those up by coloring. You could use colored pencils or you could use highlighters or markers. Now we're going to do some notes about the central nervous system. So it has two parts. It has the brain and it has the spinal cord. Those make up the central nervous system or CNS. sends and receives signals. It sends messages to the muscles and it receives messages from sensory organs. So these are things like the skin, which we can see in the model, the eyes, the ears, the nose, all of our senses are going to go to the central nervous system and all of our muscle movements come from the central nervous system. Now let's do the second part. The second part is called the peripheral nervous system. 
I'm going to use green for the peripheral nervous system. Okay, I just realized that I strangely made this a little Christmas-like, which wasn't really my intention. <laughs> but now that I've done some coloring, I'm just gonna tape down the arms and legs a little bit better. And then we're gonna do some more labeling. So this is known as the PNS or the peripheral nervous system. If you think about the periphery, uh, the periphery is on the outside of something. And so the peripheral nervous system is all the nerves outside the brain and spinal cord. This includes the arms and legs, which you can clearly see from the diagram, but it also includes nerves running to the organs in your abdomen, for example, all your digestive organs, um, and the nerves running to your heart. Now there are two main kinds of nerves in the peripheral nervous system. You have the motor neurons, which receive signals from the brain. To allow muscles to move. And you have sensory neurons, which send signals to the brain about all of our senses. So things like smell, taste, touch. In the arms, you'll see their skin, and so that represents a sensory organ, and that means we're showing sensory neurons running this way. You could just as easily have shown motor neurons in the arms but they chose to show sensory neurons there. And then in the legs, they're representing motor neurons. So we have the signal running the opposite way from the brain. In the skin, we have these cells called receptor cells. So the receptor cells pick up signals. We'll say sensory signals and that's what is then relayed to the brain. And in muscles, we have cells called effector cells. And those receive signals so muscles can move. That is the basics of the nervous system and what's gonna go on the front of the sheet. And you can either continue with this activity and do the back, or you can potentially come back to it later. So for my students, we'll come back to it in about a week after we've learned some more about the brain and central nervous system. Part two of this activity is learning about the three main kinds of nerve cells. So you're gonna use this piece of paper in order to learn about the kinds of nerve cells. And you wanna cut out each nerve. And I'm gonna show you my cut out versions of the nerves. So when I did my cutting, I wasn't too particular about getting right up to the black line. You can see I didn't want to cut around each individual dendrite, but then when I got to the axon, I did cut along it. So you can decide exactly how much of the white you want to leave. And then here's my last one, I already taped it. Um, but again, you can see that on the black rectangles, I did cut more cleanly, but around the whole neuron, I left a little bit of white to make life easier. So go ahead and get those cut out. I'm gonna start by talking about the sensory neurons. And you can go ahead and tape down your sensory neuron. I would tape it in the same position because I'm going to show how each of these neurons connects to the next one. So let's go ahead and label this guy sensory neuron. And we'll label the parts. This is the cell body, and inside is the nucleus with the chromosomes. 
This is the start of the neuron, so you can see the branching. Those are the dendrites. And the first part of this is called the dendron because it's leading up to the cell body. And then once we get past the cell body, that's called the axon. And here we have the axon terminal, terminal meaning end. So these are the end of that neuron. And remember that the sensory neuron is always going to pick up signals from the sensory organs. So the dendrites are embedded in sensory organs such as the eyes, the skin, the ears, and they're going to be picking up the signals, which means that this neuron sends its signals this direction. Neurons go from dendrite to axon terminals, so the signals get picked up in the sensory organ, transferred to the axon terminals, and then those signals are going to go to the brain. They're going to travel up the spinal cord into the brain. The next kind of neuron that we're going to look at, these are the neurons that make up the brain and the spinal cord. So I'm using the color that I used for the central nervous system. So this is called a relay or interneuron. And I'll make a note, this is in the brain and spinal cord. Let's go ahead and tape down our relay neuron. And just like the sensory neuron, everything's going to start in the dendrites. The dendrites from this neuron connect to the axon terminals from the previous neuron. So I'm going to tape those together. And that's where the signal jumps into this neuron. Then you can see we have the cell body and inside we have the nucleus. Here we have an axon. This axon is usually much shorter than the axon in the sensory or the motor neurons. Those can be very long, but this is usually a short axon. And at the end of this neuron, again, we have the axon terminals. Sometimes the signal ends there. You smell something, it smells good, you think about it, it stops in your brain and that's the end of the process. But remember, the central nervous system does not just receive signals, it also sends signals. So it receives signals from the sensory neurons. Those signals are gonna run this direction, but it can also send signals, and those are gonna go like this. And often those just start in your brain, you think, oh, I wanna move my hand to write. So now we have the final kind of neuron, which is a motor neuron. I went ahead and taped where the myelin sheath is, and I'm gonna tape down my motor neuron on each end. Again, this kind of neuron is part of the peripheral nervous system, so I'm going to go back to my green color, and this is called a motor neuron. Like all neurons, all action starts in the dendrites. Those are the beginning. And you can see the cell body here, which contains the nucleus. And then right here begins our axon. So the axon on a motor neuron can be very long. If you think about from your spinal cord um, down to your toe, you have motor axons that run the entire length of your leg. So these can be very, very long, which is why we need this stuff, which is called myelin sheath. And the myelin sheath helps insulate the axon to allow for the signal to travel those long distances. At the end of this neuron, we have axon terminals, just like every neuron, that's the ending. But these are embedded in muscles. Now these might be the muscles of your arms and legs, that might be what you think of.
but also things like the heart muscle is controlled by motor neurons and the muscles that help move your food through your intestines and through your stomach, those all have motor neurons embedded in them too. So these are embedded in muscles and they connect to effector cells. And they receive the signals that allow our muscles to move. So these run this way. One direction only, always to muscles, always away from the central nervous system. The sensory neurons run one direction only, always away from the sensory organs and to the central nervous system. Sometimes you have an entire reflex where it all works together. Like you see, uh, you see a stink bug and that runs to your brain and your brain flips out and you jump out of your chair and drop everything because stink bugs are horrifying. But a lot of times it's just voluntary action. I'm thinking about moving my finger so it's just central nervous system to motor neuron. Or I smell something cooking so that's just sensory neuron to relay neuron. And I hope this helped you learn a little bit about the nervous system. It's my very favorite body system to teach and learn about.